My name is Julie and I am a forecaster at the National Weather Service in Billings. Today I'm going to introduce you to an important meteorological tool called the skew t log p diagram and describe some of its uses in the National Weather Service. Every day, twice a day, the National Weather Service takes upper air observations at 92 stations using a weather balloon that carries a radio sound, which is a box that contains weather instruments and data transmitters. The weather data collected by the balloon can be displayed on the above diagram called the skew t log p. What you see here is the skew t log p with no weather data plotted on it yet. This diagram is a thermodynamic diagram, meaning it helps describe our atmosphere's pressure and temperature structure. There are many lines on this diagram, including temperature, or isotherms, pressure, or isobars, mixing ratio, dry adiabats, which represent the unsaturated ascent of an air parcel, and moist adiabats, which show the ascent of a saturated air parcel. To get weather, you need rising air parcels, or lift, moisture and instability, all of which can be diagrammed here. Here is a more simplified version of the skew t log p with weather data from a weather balloon plotted on it from Great Falls, Montana. The plotted weather data is called a sounding. The red line denotes a plot of temperature from the ground up to 15 kilometers or about 49,000 feet. The green line is dew point temperature or the temperature the air needs to be cooled to in order to achieve a relative humidity of 100%. The black barbs on the right of the diagram represent wind speed in knots and wind direction. The environmental wet bulb temperature profile, i.e. the temperature that would result from evaporational cooling of each level to saturation, is plotted in dark cyan between the temperature and dew point traces. So what do we use this data for? One use is predicting if there will be thunderstorms on a certain day, and if so, if they will be severe. You may recall the devastating Joplin, Missouri tornado that occurred late in the afternoon on May 22, 2011. This tornado was rated an EF5 with winds greater than 200 miles per hour, the strongest type of tornado. Tornadoes come from severe thunderstorms, Remember, to get weather, we need lift, moisture, and instability. To get severe thunderstorms, we need one more ingredient called shear. Shear is the amount of change in wind direction and wind speed with height. It takes the right combination of instability and shear to produce severe weather. Here is a sounding from Springfield, Missouri, near the time of the Joplin tornado. Springfield is about 70 miles east of Joplin and is circled in light blue on the map. Note the area between the dashed red lines and the red temperature line denoted as CAPE. CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy, or the amount of instability potentially available to a thunderstorm, assuming all other conditions are favorable for thunderstorms. The CAPE value on this sounding is 3,928 joules per kilogram. To get a decently strong storm, you only need at least 1,000 joules per kilogram of CAPE. Regarding the shear on this sounding, we are using a value called BRN shear. The BRN shear on this sounding is 60 meters squared per second squared. Values of 35 to 40 meters squared per second squared or greater have been associated with supercells or severe thunderstorms. So as you can see, this sounding shows a very high potential for severe weather if we have all the necessary ingredients. Contrast the area of Cape in this sounding to the Springfield, Missouri sounding in the previous slide. This Cape area is skinny 
and only amounts to 507 joules per kilogram. The BRN shear is 32 meters squared per second squared. These values do not support a strong thunderstorm if one was to occur. Another use for the SKU-T log P diagram is to diagnose what kind of winter weather we will have. Here we have temperature plotted in red and dew point plotted in blue. When diagnosing winter precipitation type from a sounding, we use the top-down method. We start at the top of the sounding and work our way down to see where the temperature and dew point lines fall with regard to the zero degree isotherm on the SKU-T. Two things can be seen above. First of all, both the temperature and dew point traces are to the left of the zero degree isotherm throughout the depth of the sounding. So the entire sounding is below zero degrees Celsius or below freezing. Secondly, the temperature and dew point lines are very close together, which means the moisture is high throughout most of the sounding. This means that precipitation will fall in the form of snow. Here is a sounding that shows freezing rain. As we work our way from the top down, we see a large portion of the sounding is below freezing and is also very moist. Snow would be falling out of this portion of the sounding. However, as we continue working down the traces, the temperature and dew point nudge to above the freezing or zero degree isotherm. As snow falls down into this warm layer, it melts into rain. Continuing on down, the sounding goes below freezing again. The rain from above refreezes onto ground surfaces and other objects and you have freezing rain. A sleet sounding is quite similar to a freezing rain sounding. However, you may have a smaller layer of above freezing air and or a larger layer of below freezing air near the ground. If you'd like to learn more about the SKU-T log P diagram and more about other weather topics, please visit these links. Thanks for your time and please direct any questions to your teacher.